So starting with this concept today, what we are doing is we're going to start with your traffic flow management, which is through the firewall. So if you remembered, I mean, <clears throat> uh, from the last class around, so you have the concept of security level, which works with your ASA. So inside interfaces generally are the trusted ones. So they are having a higher security level. So by default, we give it as 100, the highest one. The outside the untrusted one, we give security level zero. The DMZs generally will have a middle value. Say I kept it as 50s, right? Or you can have other interfaces of your choice, like you can have a guest interface that goes towards your guest VLAN, right? In that case, you can give a security number, which is, you know, not 100, but it should be less than 100. The most trusted interface is basically your insight. That is the reason you give it as 100. Now, what happens behind the scene, just a second? <clears throat> so behind the scene, what will happen is, you know, the traffic flow that I have talked about. One second. The traffic flow that I've talked about, so you guys know that if I go for a traffic flow, which is a packet that is traveling from high security level to low security level, by default, all traffics are going to be allowed, right? any traffic or all traffic are allowed. And specifically, you know that the TCP traffic and UDP traffic are inspected. And for that, you create a connection table, right? So that the similar return traffic, you know, is matched against the connection table entry and it is allowed to come back in. So any traffic that is initiated from high security level going to low security level, if it is TCP and UDP based traffic, only those traffic can return. And you have also experienced from last time around that if I'm sending ICMP packets from inside to outside, my request is going, but the replies are not coming back. So the echo reply which comes back, the echo reply packets normally are blocked because ICMP is a non-TCP, non-UDP in a protocol version. So it does not have a connection table for the same. And we need to have an explicit <laughs> ACL which is allowed on the outside interface in the inbound direction for this packet ICMP echo reply packet to come back to my network, right? So we control this particular traffic flow, which is basically through traffic. That's very important to realize that what kind of traffic it is. It is through traffic. So the traffic is actually passing through the firewall from one zone to other zone. And normally to control that through traffic, we normally go for firewall ACLs right, firewall ACLs. So generally, 99% of time, what you will feel is you apply the ACL on the outside interface. Because if you want to allow some internet traffic from outside that is trying to reach inside as a through traffic or trying to reach your DMZs as a through traffic, so generally you want to allow them on the outside interface in inbound direction using an explicit firewall ACL, all right? Because if you don't have the entry in the firewall ACL, I mean, uh, no traffic is by default allowed to come from security level point of view, right? From low security level to high security level. That's the importance of firewall ACL, what it plays. Now, how many of you know, uh, I mean, I, I expect everybody to know regarding the basic of ACL stuff, right? So in, in types of in, you know, concepts of ACL that we follow, so ACL basically it's a packet filtering technology, either you permit the traffic or deny the traffic based on the ACL statements. Right, and you know that there are, you know, ACL can be written in two formats, right? We can write the ACL in a numbered format or you can write the ACLs in a named format. So what I'm getting is a numbered and a named format. So you can write either in numbered or in named. I mean, you have got uh, either with this particular factors, you can write down ACLs. They're normally called as a standard ACL, right? Or you can write down extended ACLs. Standard ACL, normally they filter based on the source address. Standard ACLs are the advanced one with, where you can do traffic filtering, not only based on uh, source, but based on source address, destination address, TCP, UDP port numbers, application, uh, and also protocol numbers, right? So the whole idea is you normally go for extended ACL rather going for standard ACL for filtering logic. There are other ACLs as well. I mean, you have got dynamic ACL, right? You have got reflexive ACL, You have got time-based ACL, 
All right, you have got established ACL. So going ahead is standard and extended ACL. You can write down other ACL types as well. But normally what we do in case of an ASF firewall, you normally write whatever ACLs, but they are all in extended format, right? So in ASF firewall, it supports every ACL in extended format. So you cannot write source, I mean, standard ACL on a ASF firewall, okay? And by the way, in ASF firewall, it always write down the ACLs in the name format. It does not support number. So whatever access control list entry you are trying to write, that ACL entry will have a, either a number or a name, right? So the, the, the format that it takes is a named format. So you cannot have a numbered format for ASF firewall. And basically it is going to control your through traffic, right? Not your to traffic. It does not control to traffic. It controls your through traffic. So if you want, let us say, if you want that the outside users should not send ICMP packets and test the connectivity to the firewall. So people should not ping the firewall on the outside port. I want to block ICMP not to come as an inbound on the outside port. To do that, you know, filtering, I cannot use access list. So because all two traffic cannot be filtered using ACL, we normally do that by calling services, working with services. So we'll discuss you know, how to play with services after the firewall ACLs are taught. And one more thing that to understand with ASA ACLs are, they are extended, they're in a name format, they control the true traffic, not the true traffic. And one more thing is, you know, uh, there is no support of wildcard mask, right? You write the ACLs oh. using subnet mask. So you write the access control list entries on the entries, you know that on routers, if you write an ACL entry or a switches, layer three switches, you normally go with wildcard mask, right? But in case of ASF firewall, you write down the same thing with generic subnet mask. The key takeaway from here is this. <clears throat> firewall ACL control through traffic. It doesn't have any control for the two traffic. And the firewall ACL are extended ACL and named ACL. So you write down the ACL in extended in the name format. Uh, we don't use wildcard mask while writing the firewall is here. Instead, we use subnet mask. Now, when you talk about the syntax, right, how to write a firewall is here. Or is a firewall ACL, by the way. So you start with the command called as access list. Then you give name, write down a name, right? Now, the key important point over here is when you start the command with access list and you give a name over here, this name can be anything, right? Also, you can give a numeric value like say 101, whatever. So if you give a numeric value, don't, don't, don't think that you're writing a numbered ACL. Even the numeric values are considered as a named ACL. Okay, so either are words or numeric values, they are all considered as a named ACL. So remember that. So access list name, then you define the action. So what action you're going to take against this particular statement when the packets are arriving and the packets are matched against this particular statement, what action you want to do? They basically, there are two actions. So there is permit or there is deny. Then you can call the respective protocol that you want to filter. Say OSPF, say ESP, right, for IPsec, say, you know, ICMP, say, you know, BGP, EIGRP, TCP, UDP protocols, right? So you can call protocols over here. Then you define the source IP of the packet that you want to filter. Then you define the destination IP. Then you define the 
port numbers or application that you want to filter. All right, so access list, give the name, give the action, call the protocol, call the source and destination IPs here, and then call the equivalent in the port numbers that you want to filter. And now you know that when you create a firewall ACL or any ACL, right, you need to apply the ACL uh, on the interface. So normally what you do on the routers is you go to the interface of the routers, you write a command called as IP access group and you apply the ACL number or name in that particular port. But here in case of, uh, I mean, you have the same logic for the firewall ACLs event, but the context is from the global configuration mode itself. So from global configuration mode, you just type a command called as access group. Then you call the ACL name, whatever you have used in the ACL entry. Then you define the direction, which should be matched against the you know, traffic, whether it's inbound traffic or outbound traffic, where the ACL has to process that you know, action, right? And then you use the command called as interface and you define the interface name, that's important. <clears throat> interface, then you define the interface name. So that's the syntax that you have, right? So access group, call the ACL name, define the direction, and for which interface you are going to call the ACL, we call that. 99% you will find that ACLs are called in the outside interface in inbound direction. Now, if I take an example, let us say, I write an example for a router ACL and the same ACL I will write down for, let us say, a firewall. Talk about a router ACL, what happens? Right, we talk about a router ACL. Let's say I give an example over here. Say access list, randomly I'm saying, yeah? Access list, let us say, I give a name. It's 110. Uh, so by default, 110 is a value which I've taken from the extended ACL range. So um, 100 to 199 is your, your extended ACL range from there I've taken a value 110. So I'm writing an extended ACL over here. Say so permit some TCP packets for 192.1.23.0 network match with the wildcard bits, say going to any safety valent AD. Can anyone explain me what is that? What I'm trying to achieve? It's a, it's, it's a permit. Yeah, we are permitting port 80 uh, for the uh, 192.1.20.net uh, 20 slash 24 network. Yeah, so this is my source. All right, this is my source. That's my destination. So if I'm getting a packet from anybody of this network going anywhere for HTTP, this is allowed, right? The packets are allowed. Similarly, if I want to permit, let us say, ICMP packet, just for fun access list, 110, permit ICMP as a protocol, say anybody okay. good. So what I'm writing here, I'm writing an ACL says that I'm going to permit ICMP packets from any source going to this specific destination but I'm allowing only echo requests. I'm allowing only echo, re a re a echo request packet. If I don't write here any uh, particular service of ICMP, what happens is I'm actually calling all the services of ICMP, right? But if I want to be granular, so I can call here echo, or I can call here echo reply, so I can you know, allow a respective ICMP service with your statements, right? And if you want to apply this particular ACL router, let's say you go to an interface of a router, and then you give the command IP access group in one zero and define the direction, let's say it's inbound direction. So the packets are arriving on this port in inbound direction, the packets will be processed against this ACL statement and packets are finding a match against the ACL statement, the action would be taken against. And you know that access list will have an implicit deny at the end and access lists are always processed from top to bottom. So keep these things in mind. So even in the firewalls, I mean, the same logic applies. ACLs are processed from top to bottom and the ACLs are having implicit deny at the end. So if a packet does not have an ACL matched um, entry, so the packets are implicitly denied by the firewall. So on the other hand, if you write the similar things with your ASA ACL, right? So how do you do that? You start with a command access list. Then I give a name. 
Why then I give a name? So normally, let us say, uh, I'm I'm giving a name. Say it is outside. All right, that's my name. It's not my interface. That's my name. Okay, that's my name. And say I'm permitting the TCP traffic from 192.1.20.0, but in this case, I cannot write wildcard mask, so I have to write the subnet mask. And destination is any, and I can call the port number 80. The same thing I'm trying to achieve with your ACS here. So I'm saying that access list, you know, this is my ACL name, let's say, and I'm permitting, you know, TCP traffic from source network that going to any destination network or IPs, but I'm permitting only HTTP packets. Likewise, I can call the ICMP stuff. So say, this is my name. I'm permitting ICMP packets. Source is any set destination is 192.1.11.0. I cannot write here while cards. So I'm writing generic subnet mask. And if I want to allow echo packets, I just write here echo. So very similar to router ACL, how I'm configuring it, right? The only difference that you see here is, I mean, you don't give the keywords, the mask keyword, I mean, wildcard mask keywords there. And everything that you start with, the command is access list, and this is followed by a name. And that to apply it, I mean, you don't go to the interface directly. What you do is you give the command call as access group. Then you call the ACL name that you want to apply. Direction, say it is in one direction, and interface now into call. So say you want to allow the traffic from outside, right? So let us say the interface is outside. That's your interface. This is your ACL name. So access group outside is your name. This is your inbound direction. You're applying the interface on the outside. So don't get confused with this outside versus this outside. So this is basically your interface name. And this is your ACL name. So I go with some task over here. So you'll be naturally, you know, doing some tasks and you'll be able to handle the travel ACLs. So say um, R2 router that we have, whose IP address is 192.1.20.2. Right? Think you're not topology, this router, right? R2. Topology is, is, is in your mind. So 192.1.20.2 is the IP address. So this guy, let us say, should be allowed to telnet, say SSH, and ping the say DMZ3 network, okay, which is 192.168.3.0 slash 24. Basically, I'm allowing the outside router R2 to you know, reach the DMZs DMZ network devices for telnet, for SSH, and for ping. So I'm allowing the traffic from outside to DMZ3. Say, next one, I've got a network in the outside as 110.110. This network is allowed to access, let's say, R4, which is another already another DMZ, which is 192.168.4.4 using telnet. So I'm allowing an outside network to telnet your DMZ4 router, right? How do you do that? Say another network we have on the outside, 200.110 slash 24. This network is allowed to access an inside network 10111 using HTTP. So I'm allowing an outside user or an outside network to uh, inside device which is having an IP of 10.1.1.1 for HTTP access and say task number four I'm going to allow ICMP echo reply if inside network which is 10.11.11.0 slash 24 let's say it tries to reach any internet resource using ping all right, so what I'm doing here is this. So if let us say 10, 11, 11, 0, wants to send an you know, echo request to anywhere in the world of outside, the echo reply should come back in. And let's say I'm writing one more task, say R3 and R4, which is my two devices in two DMZs, DMZ3, DMZ4, should have full access to each other. 
without using any ACL. All right. And finally, we are going to apply the ACL on the outside interface. Because naturally, you know, you're allowing all the traffic from low security level either to DMZs or to inside. So they're coming from low to high security levels and to allow that on the outside interface. So the basic idea is that, right? So you're allowing the traffic from the outside to inside or to DMZ3 or to DMZ4, which is coming from low to high security level at any cases. And this is all your inbound direction traffic and we'll apply this on this outside interface. So from the ASA, if I try to ping, let us say outside, which is say 199.111, will this ping work guys? From the ASA, if I try to ping this IP address, yeah. traffic for ICMP is allowed by default. And from the last class around, we know that. So any, anybody on the inside, let's say, I want to ping 10.111, which is on the inside, I can reach my DMZ IPs and my other DMZ IPs, right? Are reachable from the AC with respect to ping. All right, and on all the routers, you know, what I've done is I've enabled Telnet as well. So Telnet is enabled with the password of Cisco. All right, so now you can look, I mean, uh, if I try to, from R1, if I be on inside router R1, and if I try to ping, let us say anything on the outside, 199.111, my echo request will go, but the replies won't come back. And you know the reason why, right? So the inside router cannot send, <clears throat> I mean, cannot ping successfully to the outside network, but that, that I want to achieve it with my ACL stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that, guys. So copy it. I go to the ASA, global config mode. Here we go. Paste everything. So no syntax added, everything is taken. MACLs are there. So this now if you good. look into that, show access list, you give the name. I mean, if you don't give a name, you can see the ACLs are there look into that the seals are there and you can see that i mean you can see uh this acl you know a name called as outside there's a six line elements that you wrote and you can see this acl has got what are the you know context of the acls and if there is any packet matching against this particular stuff okay now point to be noted one thing over here I wrote the ACL, which is allowing my conditions. So I allowed, you know, might be some telnet traffic to this guy, HTTP traffic to this guy, ICMP reply traffic to that inside network, might be telnet SSH ping to this guy. So I allowed multiple conditions, right? From outside to come back in. Now, I mean, you have this protocol that is OSPF, which is running here, right? Remember? Between R2 to the ASA? So regarding OSPF, did you write any ACL? There is no requirement for OSPF to be called in the ACL over here. So if you go to the ASA and if you see here, show OSPF neighbor, still you have neighborship with everybody. Show route OSPF, no problem. All right, you have the routes. Can you reach from the ASA outside networks? You can, not an issue, but everything is working fine. All right, now let's go for the testing part. So if I go to R2, with my conditions, what is the first condition I had is R2 should be able to 
telnet ssh and ping the dmz3 network so before it was not possible at all and you know you know that the reason why so now from r2 if you want to telnet the dmz3 which is 192 168 3.3 which is basically telnet is allowed on r3 and here we go you can allow now right for users if you do you can see that r2 has accessed it from outside such is not configured so not going as a search ping yep so ping is basically you can do that ping 192.168 g168 you know 3.3 this thing will work because i've allowed that on the acl all right without the acl definitely it was blocked <clears throat> 